Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. So, so I continue, and I love that I'm, we continue and better together, and I, I believe that God has a word for you tonight. I believe that tonight is a prophetic word. I believe that all of you, and I'm including myself, that this word was birthed out of the heart of God. And I believe that there's times that are coming, and we're in a pivotal time when the body of Christ needs to rise. But I, I told the Lord, you always give me the same things, rise, rise, and, you know, and let us see the kingdom advance. And the Lord said, because it hasn't been done yet. It's not that he doesn't want to move. It's not that God is not into miracles. It's not that God is not into signs and wonders and healing, deliverance. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. But why is it that we're not seeing miracles? Why is it that we're not seeing? And we are. There is um, some miracles, some signs, right? And a few wonders. But I think our God is wondering, where are you? You know, churches, I, I, as we were in Mexico, uh, we were talking about how many churches in the States, and this is the States, I'm not talking about the church in general, the, in, the, in the whole globe, I'm talking about the church in the States. Uh, it's still the same stats, still stand as of today, that 13,000 churches open every year. And we're like, yay, right? Together, together. Within seven years, or in the same year, actually 7,000 churches close their doors. And I thought, but why are they closing their doors? Is it because of the lack of finances? I thought, mm -mm. because we have never, since we came to the church, we know that every need has been met because God is going to meet it. It wasn't my idea. I did not sign up to be a pastor. I, as I said, wanted to be a missionary to Paris, <laughs> eat baguettes, pray for the French, right? From there, Lord, take me to Belgian, Belgian waffles. So everything that I love, right? <laughs> Belgian waffles. And I'm not kidding. I thought, you know, take me to those beautiful places. If it was my plan, right? But the plan of God, that's not the plan of God. If always good and comfortable, it's not. But you know, when God put something in your heart and places a birth, a, a new dream, a new purpose, and he's taking you in, into a new place, it's always gonna, you're always going to find difficulties. Can we just say it? Wherever you plant yourself in a church, because you need to be planted in a church, right? If you were not here, you watched the video from last Wednesday, because I'm not going to go into bringing the, did you see when I was trying to pull the, the, the plant? I was sweating, Right? And I literally, I was struggling because when people are ready to, to part ways, and as I said, the majority of time, and please listen to me. I'm not saying that you leave a church because you're offended. I'm not saying that that's the case every time, but the majority of time is due to our relationship. And, and it has to be because, you know what, the, the, I always said that the, my Christianity, my relationship with God is personal, right? It's not private. It's personal. But do you know when we're saying that our relationship with Jesus Christ is personal? Do you know what we're saying? It's saying that our relationship with, with Christ is personal with God, with others, and within myself. It includes people. It includes me. So tonight we're going to have fun, okay? So please relax. Some people are like really tense. What are you going to talk about? Shh. Just relax. Calm yourself down. If you want to hug yourself, hug yourself before I start. Okay, so... John 15, uh, 12 says, this is a commandment that I, that I give you, right? That you love one another as I have loved you. What an easy commandment. Simple. I shouldn't say easy. Simple, right? What's the commandment? I want you to love God. Love one another just as you love yourself. But what happens when you don't love yourself? What happens when you don't like yourself? What happens when you busy yourself because you don't want to do, deal with yourself? Then we busy, we busy each other with things or with people, but you still don't like you. 
you still don't love you. So therefore, we don't know how to love God, we don't know how to love ourselves, and we don't know how to love others. And being together, according to the, to the word of God, is, it's being in love. And it's not that ooey gooey love, right? I'm not talking about, oh, when you like someone and you see like, hmm. I'm talking about that kind of love. As I said last week, it's the love of being together that it causes me to be uncomfortable. It's the love that is not always, is not always convenient. That it comes, and in this love, it, it, it actually forces me to grow out of my comfort zone, out of my comfort. And in this love, if I root and, and ground myself in the love of Jesus Christ, and I, I set myself, you know, Lord, I want to grow. And we read the Bible, and the Bible is, who reads his Bible every day or her Bible every day? Thank you for being honest. See, this is a church, honest people. You know that you don't have to be ashamed if you don't read your Bible? You can start today. You can start with one chapter. Okay, fine. Just memorize one scripture. Jesus wept. And you know what? Then be like Jesus and feel for others. But today I want to talk about the, the children of Israel because they usually get on my nerves. Who reads about the children of Israel? And you're like, you're like oh. we're like, and you feel so righteous, right? When would they get it? <laughs> you read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and you go back into Judges and Kings, and you're my gosh, there's stories told over and over and over, and they were walking with God. I mean, it, it, it's an amazing story, and we read it like it was just nothing. But I'm like, when I read it, I always get upset at them. I have this indignation, right? Like, I'm right. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to that indignation, right, uh, which I was really upset at them. But the Lord always flips it on me. Deuteronomy 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. We're going to be there for a while. So bear with me. Okay, this verse is. These are the words which Moses spoke to who? To some, a few, to all. So God's speaking to us, to all of us. It's not speaking just to the leaders, the people that are, you know, saved, the people that are unsaved. It's God speaking to all of us, right? Which Moses spoke to all, Israel, on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness. In the plain opposite to all those names, Saf between Paran, Tophel, let's see if I do it well, Laban, Azeroth, and Dinah, or I don't know, you, you take it, you read it all. But this is what matters. It is 11 days, what? From Horeb to the way of the mountain Seir to Kadesh Barnea. Oh, I, I, I did so good there. How many days? So the journey was an 11-day journey, right? It, it's still God give you, gives you time. We want things instantly, right? If it's God, why didn't God transform me? He, he's, not, he's not Star Trek. Beat me up, Scotty. Don't you wish that God would take you from glory to glory and you just stand straight and then he beams you up and all of a sudden you're in a different place and great growing in faith and I thought if it's God and he's able to do all things why didn't he just you know what provide a few a few horses I thought about things that the Lord could have done right okay 11 days yeah they did have things but maybe you know they didn't have Nikes then right uh walking and so I thought about all those things, but see, God always uses time. We don't want time, right? If God is so powerful and he's without limits, he should be able to touch me now, boom, somebody pray for me, and voila, I am a transformed woman. I'm a transformed man. God doesn't work like that because he's interested in developing our character in Christ. We won't learn. If it just could have been one day, he could have done it, right? So 11 days. But now, he says, now it came to pass in the what? What is what? Day? Year. In the 11th month of the first day of the month that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandment to them. Commandments to them. After he had killed whatever king. We're going to call them Sai. Is that okay? 
king of the Amorites who dwells in, oh, here we go. He dwells in Heshbon and all king of Bashan who dwells in Ashtaroth and Edrie. You call it Idria, whatever you want. Do not send me an email. This is how you pronounce it. God is not interested in the pronunciation. He's pronouncing how you're going to chew on the word, how you're going to live the word, right? <laughs> on this side of the Jordan, in the land of Moab, Moses began to explain this law, saying, the Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb, saying. So he's saying, after 40 years, he's repeating the same thing. Sometimes we're like, how come God hasn't spoken to me in 40? I can't hear God. You know, God is always speaking. What happens is the other voices get louder. Our own opinion gets louder. So he says, I'm going to say it again after 40 years. And you know, I love Moses because he's like, I'm going to be details after the 40th year, 11th month, and the first day, and 26 seconds. You have dwelled long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey. It's not turn up and go to a party. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all of the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowlands, in the south and on the seacoast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you go in and what? And I was like telling the Lord, every year you give and God's speaking, every year I don't know if you're, very, if you're one of those prophetic people and love to hear, what is God saying this year? What is this year, right? Everyone that I know, and they're very legit prophets, they're speaking, this is a year of new beginnings, this is a year where a wave is coming to California. You can hear all these things, and then your year ends, and you're like, what the heck happened? I didn't see no wave. It was not no new beginning for me. I'm actually repeating five years ago. But see, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. And that you and I get to choose. And I thought, and if you go back to the story, it was like, okay, prior to that, he goes back. I mean, your homework is to read all, all the chapter, right? Deuteronomy 1, read it. Because then it goes back again. And he's kind of, I, I think, well, we know the story, right? Moses got really sick of them. Right? Let's just be honest. He, he was like up to here. And he was like, oh my gosh, these people complain all the time. But he's repeating again in verses, I think, 19 or 18. And he's saying, this is what happened. And when I told you, like, I don't know how many years ago, but let's do it again. Right? And I believe that God is telling you tonight, you have long, long enough, dwell long enough in the mountain of maybe a depression. Maybe you're still going around the mountain. Here we come. But you're still in the mountain of disappointment. And I'm talking about you as a person, you as a church, and you probably in your family. You have dwelt long enough in the mountain of deception. You have long dwelt enough in the mountain of security. You have dwelt long enough, you name it. And because we're talking about being together, you have, long, you have dwelt long enough in the mountain of isolation. Last Wednesday, I told you that just because you're in church doesn't mean that you're together. That we're doing life together. You just go, you attend. It's like a marriage, right? We marriage, Jesus uses a marriage, a mirror of a marriage with his kingdom. Right? Just because you're married, you sleep in the same bed, and here and there you have a few words, doesn't mean that you're really that marriage is alive. And God wants us to live. God wants us to experience the love of Jesus. And, and this is what the church exists. So you and I can, can get to exercise the word of God. So you and I can get to experience how does God seems to, to fit us together? How, how does the body of Christ look like being together and being the church? As I said last week, I love to do things by myself. You know what? Because then I don't have to talk. I don't have to, like, I, you know, I don't have to tell this person how to do it because if I tell them to cut this paper, they're not going to cut it the way I will cut it, and I think I do better. I do better alone. And there's people that are very sociable, but you're still not, not intimate. And when I'm talking about being intimate, I'm not talking about sex, okay? Let, let, let's get rid of that. Intimacy means you get, you get to get to know the person that lives inside of me 
you get to know the real Virginia. The one that sometimes is up and sometimes is down, but he's so, she always gives glory to God. That, that's that Virginia that I'm talking about. But we hardly ever get, get, um, get dirty. Because God says that we are to be rooted and grounded in love. And love is risky. I want to I wanna be known to be a church that we are not afraid to, of one another. I want to be known that this is a church that we do what God tells us to do, that there is relationships here that will last until Jesus comes back. I want to be known that this church is so healthy that our marriages are thriving because we're not afraid to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to be known in this church that our youth will know who they are now in this, in this season of their lives, that they won't forget their God, that God is able to use them now. I want our children to know that there is a God who hears their prayer. But sometimes I'm like, I, I was having this conversation uh, when I was in Mexico, and, and, and they said, you know, this person was sharing their testimony, and they said to me, you know, and, and, and I related to that testimony because as children, we're telling God, the children, you know what? God hears prayer. He listens to prayer. But do you know that you and I can be a miracle to someone's life? How, how am I a miracle? Well, maybe this child didn't have a place to go, so you know what? You open your door, and now that child lives with you. Right? You didn't just pray for that child, or this or youth, or whatever. You know, we're going to pray for you. In Jesus' name, God will open doors, but then you have an extra room. I'm not saying go do it, but you, you see what I'm saying. And the Lord said, you need to tell them that many of you, and that's counting myself in it, we have been mounting, we have been tenting. That's what is my tent here. We have been so comfortable, so, so comfortable. Living in the same place, we're sick of it. You don't like it. But this is what we do. And I'm going to go in the tent. I'm going to have to take off my shoes. Then you're going to see how short I am. Okay. Do not show my tootsies. Okay. This is how we want to do church. You come with your own bubble. Don't tell me. Don't lie to me. You're tenting right there where you're sitting. Do you see me? <laughs> Jesus, you are Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I don't know how to sing. My daughter should be here singing, and I'll be lip singing, right? Bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. And here and there. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm serving now. I got involved. <laughs> and they want to know about you. So how do you feel about <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, you don't have not even time. And then you get, and the zipper gets stuck, and you're like, oh, dang it. That's why I have two zippers. <laughs> sickening, sickening. These people just want to know about me. Jesus, you are Lord. But this year, you know what, this year is 2018, and the pastor is talking about going together. And I'm going to tell you that when I was growing myself to be together, and I'm talking about the body of Christ, I would come out of my tent. And then you start to get people, right, to, to know people. And they all they want to know is about you. I love people that talk about themselves. Because that doesn't deal with me. Sister, I could pray for you. Let me give you some scriptures. But then they ask me, like, uh, so something very personal. Oh, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, I will love you and forever. And we live in a cycle for 40 years. I'm going to ask you, who's been here for eight years with us? Awesome. How many friends do you have in this church? Don't tell me. I'm saying friends. People that you will trust your wounds to. Are you still afraid of the pastor? 
some people are afraid of pastors. What the heck? I'm like, you're afraid of me? Dude, I'm bony and skinny. should not be afraid of me. What am I saying to you tonight? I believe that God is saying, you know, you need to get off the mountain. And I love what the NIV says because it says you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp. Break camp in advance. Break the cycle. What's your cycle? You know, we all have the same pattern. That's what the, the enemy is banking. I already know that they're going to go. And I'm going to talk about churches, right? Because I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about your church. I'm going to talk about the church, you and I. We are the church. I'm including myself in it. So don't say, oh, because she's a pastor. She got no, 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 no. It has taken me years. No, because God didn't want me to, to, to be whole and heal in the area. It's because I don't trust no man. And we love to pull out the other card that we say, you know what? I'm going to trust God. I'm trusting God. But you don't trust a person, not even one. Okay, then you don't trust God. Because how can you trust God that you don't see and your brother that you see? Are we getting here? Getting it? We need to break camp. What does that mean? It's like it's the other version says turn and go back. Go back to do what I asked you to do at the beginning. And we think, and that's what people don't want. They want to stay away from churches. They don't want to plant themselves in churches. And if they plant themselves in churches, they're always camping alone. You can still, still see through, right? But you're not coming in my tent. This is a personal tent. But who are your closest friends? Well, I have three friends. Jesus, God, and the Holy Ghost. That's how we do life. And you think God is pleased with that? Do you know the love of Christ is never going to change? The, the way God loves us, he loves us. And whatever you do, he cannot change who he is because that's his nature. He is love. But can we please God? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. To be able to say we're better together, that's to walk in love and to have great faith. Because, yes, people are going to let you down. Yes, people are going to hurt you, but you need to be okay with it. You're going to hurt somebody, but you always think people are going to hurt me. People are going to talk about me. I already know how people are. Christians are hypocrites. Get the violin. But that doesn't change you, and it doesn't change anyone else. I believe that it's time for us to recognize, okay, what is, God, what is God doing in this time? And I believe that God wants us to be together and be messy. I'm not saying bring all your drama, okay? I'm not talking about being dramatic. But I'm talking about that you, you plant yourself in a church and you, you decide and you say, you know what? This year I'm just going to break down. I break down my tent and my comfort. And I'm going to learn how to work with others. I'm going to learn how to lead people because you and I have been given the ministry of reconciliation. And all of us have it, right? The ministry of reconciliation, what is it? It's to bring people back to our Father. And how are we going to bring them? We only can bring them to the love of Christ. Right? John uh, 3.16 says, God did not send his son to condemn the world, but what? Okay, only a few. That will be your first scripture to memorize. It's okay. It says, he did not send his son to condemn the world. I'm not here, and Jesus is still here, and his plan is not about condemnation. His plan is about saving. He said, I didn't send my son to condemn the world, but I sent my son to save the world. And then when he left, he left us the Holy Spirit, and he said, now I'm giving you my assignment. is passed on to you, brother. Now your job is to love them and to bring them to the Father. That's my job. That's your job. That's not the missionary job. It's not, the, it's not the, the evangelist job. It's not the pastor's job. It's not the leader's job. It's not the teacher's job. It's your commandment. This is what I want you to do. I think right now I want you to close your eyes. Have 30 seconds, 30 seconds. 
and ask God, where is it that you've been dwelling long enough that God is telling you? And he will tell you, where have you been there long enough? Now it's time to go back, and I want you to possess what I gave you. You need to know that you cannot con conquer alone. Now you can open your eyes. Some of you are so, so, so awesome. You're still praying like, Jesus, please <laughs> expose me. He will. He will. Pastor Tim said he, that his light is going to break forth in our darkness. But you know what? The exposing is not what we think. He's not going to call you out and say, brother, sister, you've been sinning. You've been at the clubs. You've been... That's not the exposing that I'm talking about. He's going to expose the place that is broken, the place that is hurting. He needs to expose it so that sunshine can come in, so that light can come in, and healing can take place. I'm going to give you another scripture. And I think this is where people get very twisted in the church. Because we don't know, I'm supposed to carry burdens for one another, but then I'm supposed to carry my own burdens. What the heck is that? Okay, let's go there. Galatians 6.2. Am I the only one confused? I wrote down, Elevate Church exists to reconcile you and the world to the Father. But Galatians 2, 6, 2 says in the Amplified, if you can put it for me, it says, carry one another's burdens. And this way you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is that what? The law of Christian love. It says, carry one another's burden." The church, we are supposed to carry each other's burden. People will start coming, and I believe that people will start coming to this church when we're able to, to have a safe place for them. When carry each other's burden means that, you know what, I'm going to empathize with what you're going through. Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus was moved out of love. Jesus didn't heal because he was supposed to heal because he's the son of God. He didn't walk on earth like, oh, my gosh, I have to go to the mountain because there's all these sick people. And, you know, since I'm the son of God, right, I have to go do what I have to do. And they follow me all the time, and I have 12 ding-dongs walking with me. And I'm teaching them, and they never get it. They don't even have faith. Sometimes they know that I'm the son of God. Other times they don't even know who I am. And I already know that they're going to all betray me. They're going to abandon me. You know, Jesus didn't walk like that. In the 12, in the disciples, in his crew, the people that were doing life with them, because he had more disciples. How do I know that? Because when you read the Bible, it says that when he was saying, drink my blood, and, you know, he did all that, people got all freaked out. All the other disciples were like, you know, we're out of 5,000. He is going nuts here. But that means that the 12, his inner circle stay, and some other ones did too. But do you know, I thought, my gosh, see, he was compelled by love to stay together with his 12, knowing that one was going to betray him, knowing that there was one cheating him, knowing that there was one taking the money. He knew all things. And he didn't go back and, you know, Peter, come, come let's, let's pray for Judas. Have you heard of those prayer circles? We're praying for so-and-so. Let's pray for Sister Virginia. She pretends to like people, but we know she doesn't. May God deliver her. Let's pray for their marriage. Oh, I heard they're having problems. God is leading me to stand. Shut up. <laughs> no, God, no, God is not leading you. You're gossiping. And how is God going to trust us with the pain of the world if, we can't even, if I can't even carry your pain? If I can even open my mouth, if I open my mouth and tell, you know, I'm not feeling well. Pastor Virginia said, blah, blah, blah. that was for that person. And it's not for you to repeat it. It's for you to, I want the people to come here and be able to trust you with their wounds. That God will trust us not only with the world, but God will trust us with the body of Christ that is so broken. Not because it's the right thing to do, because it's what you will want someone to do for you. He says, do what you will do unto others, right? Not like, okay, so whatever you saw, you read by it, but then you're, you don't want to be, you don't want to belong to anything. You're afraid of people. You're very social, but you're still afraid. A 
pretend that I'm together, but we're not together. Do you know when I started to, to put myself in, in, and I wanted to grow in love? Do you, do you know when you grow up and feeling that you cannot trust a soul on earth? And I'm talking about being in church. I'm not talking about being mean in the world. When I came to, to, to walk in the things of God, and, and this is years. I'm not talking about, oh, my gosh, I came and voila, the woman was transformed. I'm talking years, my journey, my 11 days journey. And a few times I took like 40 days and, you know, depend. your journey, God already set a plan for your journey. But he needs your agreement. You need to choose, okay, Lord, I'm going to walk with your plan. Not my plan because my plan, I'm always going to add more, but I think I'm going to do it this way because you're not doing it for me. So I need to put my own hands and I, I need to do it by myself because you're not responding to me. But I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be very honest with you. When I started and I said, okay, I'm going to find someone. I'm just going to share a little bit, just a little bit of me. And I opened myself and I said, okay, I'm going to share something. And I share it. And it was very personal. And within a month, someone else knew that thing that I said. And I went back into my tent. Okay, I need to be in church. The right thing is to be in church. See, it's forget about being doing the right thing. Is you do what's the love thing. But what does love? You need to go back to love because Jesus is love. God is love. And then God would tell me my moments of isolation that I would be like, I wanted to complain. And he told me, see, you get mad at the Israelites, but you're one of them. You're complaining, but it's you. Who cares what they do, Virginia? You need to work on yourself. I need to take responsibilities for my feelings. And that's about the burdens. This is, we are supposed to carry, I am supposed to carry your pain. And I'm supposed to help you. And I'm supposed to be there for you. Because it's coming out of love because I'm rooted and grounded in Jesus. But not because I should do it. The pastor also and so that leader should have gone visit that person. Really should have? Who wants to do should have? It's a rule. It's the law. I was going to say something I'm not going to say. No. See, that's what we, we become martyrs. We're like, oh, my gosh. I, and I'm saying things that I have said to the Lord. Lord, you're sacrificing me. He's like, you're doing it yourself, girl. No, when I go visit someone, it's because I want to go visit that person. Because I'm going to make time for that person. No out of sacrifice. I'm not going to sacrifice. If you, if, you, if you see yourself and everything that you do for God, it's a sacrifice. You missed it. You missed it. Do you know how many times I have missed it? Because I felt like, but I am, I am very loyal. I am very faithful. I visit, you know, when I was sick, I took them a soupy. I bought it from the best bistro because I don't know how to cook. It cost me $40. And what have they done for me? Oh, you know that that's when we miss it. That's when we have walked away out of love and without knowing it. And you're, that's the church. I don't want to belong to the Dude, it's you. Because everything that we do, we do it unto God. Unto Jesus. Out of that place that led Jesus to the cross. It wasn't his sacrifice. The cross doesn't mean his sacrifice. It means love. It was out of that love that compelled him and led him to sacrifice himself. No one sacrificed him. No one. He didn't give credit to anyone. He said, I, it's in me. I have the power. If I want it, I will call all these angels. Oh, the whole army will come down. Can you believe that? I read it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. How have I missed it? But you know the goodness of God that he has redemptive time. That he's a redeemer. The enemy will tell you, see, you have lost years. Look at you. You served for 10 years and you complain for 10 years. You served for 40 years and you complain for 40 years. But you know what? We have a redemptive God. And so I started to come out again. And when would I come out again? And somebody would say the same thing. I want it literally to me. My groin was puking. And when I say puking, it means like literally barfing. Because I would, when I would share something personal, I would try back and I would say, oh, Virginia, you shouldn't share that. 
Now they're going to criticize you. Now they're going to say this. Now how to address that mentality. That's, that's a slave mentality. No, Virginia, you do not belong in that place. That's why when you didn't have Jesus, but now Jesus has brought you th to this place and you need to plant yourself in the word of God. You need to ground yourself in the love of God. So it doesn't matter what people do to you, Virginia. It's what you do with what is done unto you. And then we can become a mirror to the world and to within their churches. And you know, since the beginning, God never wanted sacrifices. He never, let's go to Hosea, if you give me that favor. Hosea 6.6. 6. It says, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice in the, in the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Do you know how many people are so knowledgeable with the word of God? More than me. More than many pastors and many, there's so many theologians in the church. He says, I don't desire even knowledge. Because knowledge, what do you do with the knowledge? As long as you do something with it, then, he, he, then he's interested in that. But you know that the word mercy means in, the, in Hebrew? It means zeal towards one another. T zeal towards anyone. Love, kindness, and especially of men among themselves. It's just, it means belonging to love. And then that's when I go back and I said, how many times have I said, you know, I have sacrificed. I was talking to my best girlfriend that I have. I can say now that I have a girlfriend. I have a friend. You know how good it is to have a friend? Well, I was sharing with her. And I was sharing with her that sometimes we make mistakes, but God can redeem you. He will redeem you. And I'm like, ah, oh, I could have like, I don't know how many friends. And I'm talking like friends, right? Like, you know, I'm not going to say, I, was, I just thought about something. But you tell that friend everything. I just had diarrhea, you know. No, I'm just, but you know what I mean? You're like, who cares? Who cares? They pass gas in front of each other. Don't do that. I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, I'm not going to go into what, what I went. But what I'm saying to you is like, and that's so what? If, 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 if in my future this person, okay, no, that it would. But I'm saying you have to be willing. Like, okay, so in the future this person happens to abandon me because that's what we think, right? Or leave me or whatever. But it doesn't matter, see, because I live out of love. I want to I wanna do church out of love. I want to be pastor out of love. I want to be mother out of love. I want to be a wife out of love. Because then whatever I do, it's not going to be, oh, I'm sacrificing. I've done 20 years and oh, eight years here, celebration of pain. Happy birthday, pastor. You don't know. It was so painful. I told the Lord. This is a conversation just happened recently. See, now you're my friends. I went home and I was like, dang, eight years of pain. I was in the backyard, so nothing has, you know how you know I'm moving, we moved. Still nothing has done, been done. So I was like, I just go to the backyard. That's the only place to lay down. Have the dogs on top of you. You're like talking to God, right? And the dogs are like, woo, woo, woo. Like they're praying with you because you're crying to God, right? It's like, Lord, eight years of pain, sacrifice. And I'm back to my house. It's not even ready. It's like, who asked you? I never asked you to, to do that. I don't recall it. I never asked you to go die. I actually asked you to live in resurrection power. You know how do you know if you're alive today? I'm going to give you the scripture. Because we'll continue next week. So look, I'm on page three, so don't worry. I have ten pages. But we're going to close. But I want you to go to 1 John 3, 14. Because that, today, 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 this today and tonight, it's combined. You know? <laughs> I told you, you learn words every Wednesday, right? To Manya, today, and Leonard, dinner, you know. We combine words. The Lord has given me the gift, you know, compounding the words. First uh, John 3, 14. It says, we know that we have passed from what? 
from death to life. Because what? Anyone who does not love remains in what? So let me ask you, how alive are you today? How alive are you today? How alive are you today? And that's, the, that's where God took me. He said, Virginia, okay, let us go back to what I said. He is the word. He sacrificed himself. He went to the cross. So you and I don't have to live like this. We don't have to be that kind of together and be like dramatic and always be gossiping and hurting people. No one can tell you something because you were going to say it to somebody else. No, if someone comes to you in this church, you keep it to yourself and you pray for them and you help them. You don't kind of even tell me because they didn't come to me. They came to you. And when God asked us to do church, I never forgot when he asked me. I was, I was working out in those times. You know, I'm coming back to that place. I'm already blessed in my physique. No, I'm just kidding. Now. I have learned to love myself, so I'm going to say it because I'm very hard on myself. But, however, I was, I, was, I, was, I was working out. And working out for me is just walking. So I, it just looks good to say work out. So I was, <laughs> I was walking on my treadmill, and I was like, I know I'm running late, but would you give me five minutes? Because it's really a really good story. So I was like doing my walk. And you know, listen to praise and worship. And you're like, and there was more people there, right? But I didn't care because you know I love God, right? So I was like, oh, Lord, you love me. Lord. Anyway, I think it was it's the, the song that it was from Kim Walker. Uh, what was the song, Alexis, that we sang here forever for a year? Oh, how he loves us, right? And I was like, oh. And you know, I don't know how to sing. So you have your, you know, your earphones, so you're like loud, right? So, oh. And my guy sound like a cat being killed. So I was like, oh, I love. And I was like in heaven having my moment with God and feeling so great. I felt like God was pleased with me. We're good with God, right? And then he all of a sudden he, is, he asked me, he says, do you love me? Oh, here we go with this conversation. So, Isn't my song proving to you? My worship is not telling you how much I love you. And that was the first year that we started church. He says, but, no, he says do, you, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. It was like Peter, right? Are we having a Peter conversation? Am I Peter? No. <laughs> you get it? Peter and, you know, <laughs> ding, ding. And so he said, I love you. And I said, Jesus. And you know, you can feel when you love Jesus, you have those moments. And you think there's only for you and Jesus, right? No one else. Don't talk to me about loving people. I just want to tell you how much I love you. He said, Jesus, you know that I love you. And I can picture him for the first time. I can picture it eight years ago. You're like, oh, my God, you've been walking for him for 21 years, and you never, no, I never did. And I don't feel shame about it. So I said, yes, Lord, Jesus, I love you. And he says, do you love my body? I love you all, you know, from head to toe. Even your toes. He said, I love you. And then all of a sudden, I saw his body very wounded. No, he says to me, but when I said, if you love me, you love my body, he, he showed me how wounded the body of Christ is, and that means us, we're wounded. And I was like, well, let me think about that one. And I said, Lord, no, I love, I love you. I love you. I love you with every wound. But I was like, but you're not wounded. He says, but my body is wounded. And he said, can I trust you with their wounds? I never forgot that. He says, if I send you one, would I, can I trust you with one? And I said, yes, Lord. So to me, that matters. And I believe that this house is that house that people will come with open wounds. And God will do surgery here. And he will heal. But it will be done through you. It will be done through you. Because they came, they opened up their hearts, and they told you their lives, and we didn't like, no, sister, you get it together, brother, you get it together. No, we have compassion. I'm able to walk. Jesus walking my shoes. Jesus walking everyone else's shoes. He knows exactly how you have felt, where you have been, what you have done, what people have done to you, and he was willing to wear your shoes. We're not willing to wear someone else's shoes. Not my size, not my style. 
And then Galatians 6, 5 says the opposite. It says, can you put Galatians 6, 5? It says, for every person, you see there is a contrast. Like, well, am I supposed to care? Am I supposed to carry each other's burden? But how come in Galatians 6, 5 says, for every person will have to bear with patience his own what? Burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. You are responsible for your own feelings. But we blame the church for the feelings. No, no, the fact is, yes, I'm not negating the fact. The fact is that someone did you wrong. That's a fact. But you, my love, you're responsible for your feelings and how you felt and how you dealt with that hurt. That's your burden. And even that burden, we're not, we're not, he says, we're not, we're not designed to carry our burdens by ourselves. So see, the word is all connected because Jesus said, my burden is light. Because it comes out of love. So tonight, God is asking you to break your tent. You need to choose. I need to break this. I need to break it. You need to break from what you are. That's enough. It's enough. And you know what? You're not only going to break it, you're going to throw it away. Because I don't, he doesn't want you to save it for another day that is going to be a great day a rainy day he doesn't want rainy day specials anymore just like that and he told them he told all of them he says you know what break your tent already enough you've been camping you've been having it there and the good part is that i don't know how to put it together so it's safe to take it apart because I can. You need to break out. Now you're going to break out your ten. Thank you for all the prop people. We'll have to fix it later. <laughs> break out your tent. But don't carry it with you. Because this is what we do. You know what? They did me wrong. Maybe even in marriage. Somebody did you wrong. I'm going to marry someone else. But you still take your tent. Because when I get there, just in case, I'm going to tent up again. I'm going to have a friend. Okay, fine, God, I'm going to do it. But I'm going to break down the tent. But you know what? I'm taking my tent just in case. I'm going to go to another church, but I'm taking my tent just in case. The Lord didn't say, I want you to tent yourself. He says, I want you to root yourself. So today, what you're going to do, tonight what you're going to do is you're going to break it. And you need to just toss it. And it says, in turn, and go possess the land, the promise that I gave you for you, for your family. But then you have to check yourself. Am I alive? Or am I dying? Because if I don't love, let me tell you that you're dying. If you're still afraid of each other, if we're afraid of each other, afraid of the church, you're dying without knowing. We're bleeding. We're hemorrhaging. And it's not that God doesn't want to heal us. It's that he needs your choice. He needs you to agree, hey, the love that I'm asking you to live in, it's, it's, it's going to be light. The burden is going to be light. Because I want you to live out of love. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.